Hey everybody, this is Tony Hibbard with the Assisted Van Director. Um, I've got another video here for you guys, and this has been requested by a few of you, and I do apologize for it taking so long. Uh, long story short, um, I got sick and I was out for a week, and then we had band camp for a week, and then this past week has been um, teacher in service and trying to get everything going for the school year. So again, I do apologize that it took so long to get this video out, um, but here it is nonetheless. Um, just wanted to, to do a quick shout out to my 398 subscribers. We're just shy of 400, so hopefully in the next few days we can uh, top that top that 400 mark. So um, this video here is on building a syllabus, and I, I'm also going to roll that into building a handbook. And uh, with a lot of this, you want to check with your administrator before you you do any of this. I always send a copy to my principal just to make sure it gets there okay and that way we're all on the same page. Um, and then with the syllabus you want to check and make sure that your school doesn't have a specified uh, format. Um, in this case my school does. We are an IB school or an MYP middle years program because we're a middle school. Um, so here's what mine looks like and I'm kind of tied down to what they want me to do. So this is very simple. It's it's kind of has a, a very broad view of everything um, that we'll go through. And this is for my eighth grade band. And this is last year, so I still haven't tweaked everything for this year. Um, but pretty much course description, you know, what what we're doing, course content, you know, what we will be covering, uh, chapters covered. That doesn't really work for us, so I kind of you know made it work um, with the method books that we're doing. Uh, course materials, my kids have to have a one and a half inch three ring binder, sheet protectors, excuse me, a three ring pencil pouch, and then five mechanical pencils in the pencil pouch. I like mechanical pencils because I hate hearing a pencil sharpener all the time. Um, and then just extra things that, that students will need. A lot of things had to change because of COVID where they had to have their own stuff. And I think I'm just going to run with it and say that these things are always required. That way we don't have community valve oil and stuff being passed around. So uh, course policies, I've got a, a website. Um, if you go and check out my website, just know it's very outdated because I haven't updated that in a long time. Uh, grading policy, 50% uh, is performances. 35% uh, is playing tests. Um, I try to do a playing test, you know, once a week, once every other week if possible. And 15% is practice records or any other written work that we have to do. Um, and I'll do a video on how I do practice records. I do practice records completely different from probably anybody you've ever known. Um, and I'll, I'll do a video on that too. And then this section right here, the MYP Arts Assessment Criteria, that is an IB thing. So we have to do that for our IB stuff. Um, personal statement, there's that, uh, and then we have to do our contact. So I have to do that for all of my classes, and for the most part, it's all the same. I do change some of the stuff up here, um, and I have to do that for each class, and then we have to post it on our website. So there's that. Okay, so the handbook. Now everybody has their own version of what a handbook should be or what should be included in a handbook. And I've evolved mine. This is, I'm going into my 11th year of teaching, so mine evolves a little bit each year. Um, and again, this is last year's. Um, you know, I have my cover page. Um, and I've moved to a digital version of all this, and I'll, I'll explain how I've done that. So I've got my introduction, you know, yada, yada. I've got my contact information. Um, and this phone number here is the school phone number. I do not give my cell phone number out to any student or parent. Um, there are a couple band booster parents that do get my number, but I tell them to kind of hold that close because I don't want random parents calling me at 3 o'clock in the morning because that does happen. Um, email policy. Uh, one thing that I did add in here, I stole this from somebody. I don't remember who I stole it from, but uh, due to the nature of email, all major concerns will need to be addressed through conferences or phone communication. Um, a lot of stuff can be um, misinterpreted through text. So if it's something major, I want to be talking face-to-face -face or at least over the phone. So I added that little thing in there. A um, little thing here about parent support. 
And uh, I do have a booster program here. And we try to have a, a parent meeting w- once a month just so the parents can kind of know what's going on too. So um, student communication, you know, what my expectations are for there. If there's any conflicts, the sooner we know, the better. You know, a lot of this is kind of common sense, but um, it's good to have it in writing because common sense isn't so common anymore. Um, let's see, ensembles, I go through what our ensembles are and, you know, making a plug, we feed into Cookville High School. So once students complete eighth grade, then we, they will be ready for instrumental ensembles at Cookville High School. <clears throat> so strings, and this has kind of fallen apart here in the past couple of years because of COVID. Um, we got a fifth grade beginning orchestra and then sixth grade intermediate and then seventh and eighth grade, we combine those for a chamber orchestra. And I do allow wind players in the seventh and eighth grade chamber orchestra, so we can do more full orchestra stuff. Um, band, we've got fifth grade beginning band, sixth grade concert band, and then I combine my seventh and eighth grade for symphonic band. Um, and this is more for the parents. You know, I tell them all the instruments that are available. Goals and objectives. I pulled that from somebody else. A lot of this is stolen stuff from other people, and then I add my own own stuff into it. Um, I always say that, uh, you know, we're in Putnam County school system that all of those rules supersede or, you know, trump any, any things in here. Um, that's good to have that as a fallback. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll post this so you guys can go through this, you know, on your own. I'm not going to read it to you, but, um, a lot of the, the behavior stuff, conduct expectations, a lot of that self-explanatory, but Again, you've got to, you've got to be able, my kids are yelling in the background, so um, life happens. Uh, participation in other programs, I'm a big advocate of if a kid wants to do sports and band, we need to make that happen. And thankfully, I've got a good working relationship with uh, most of the coaches at my school. Um, so uh, we just, on both ends, both me and the coaches say, you know, you need to, you need to let us know what's going on in your other stuff. Uh, we don't really communicate with each other much. We make sure that the students are responsible for doing that. And once we kind of hold their feet to the fire, the students figure it out pretty quickly. So, um, and I've got that bolded right here. It's the student's responsibility to notify the band director and coaches of conflicts. So, and for the most part, as long as we know ahead of time, everything works out. Um, I do a suggested $25 donation. Um, we are a Title I school, so that's how that goes. Um, most cannot pay it or do not pay it. Uh, here's a plug for private lessons, uh, performance attire. I'm actually going to change this to fifth and sixth grade right here. We'll wear their ATMS band shirt and khaki pants for concerts. Um, and then my seventh and eighth grade students do concert black for our performances because they, they attend festivals and stuff like that too. So. Uh, purchasing your instrument, I can say it until I'm blue in the face. Please check with me before you buy anything, and I'll get an Amazon purchased $80 piccolo in my band room or a blue flute or you know a green trumpet, whatever. Um, one thing that I stole from somebody else is I do a recommended brands. Um, over the past couple of years, it used to be um, easier to to catch what brands were. Um, that we needed to stay away from, and that list just keeps getting longer and longer. So I just do a recommended brand, and not everybody may agree with this, and that's fine. I may have missed something. If I did, let me know, but you know, you can put what you think is good in there. Um, and then school-owned instruments, this goes through that, uh, you know, the larger instruments and percussion instruments are, are covered. Um, I do require all of my percussionists to get a percussion kit you know, the thing that has the bell kit and the snare drum and all that. Um, Cause that just, it helps keep me from having, you know, 500 percussionists. Um, but yeah, just going through all the policies with that. Um, instrument repair, I tell them, do not try to repair the instrument yourself. And, you know, for the most part, students follow that, but you always get, you know, a stuck mouthpiece and their dad gets out their pliers and breaks everything trying to get it out. Um, so equipment supply list. These are the books that I go through. 
Um, my orchestra students use Sound Innovations Book 1 and 2, and then once we go through those, we start going through habits of a successful middle string musician. I still have problems saying that. Um, and band kind of follows the same thing. I try to get through Book 1 and Book 2 by 6th grade. With COVID, that kind of made things really difficult. Um, so we're kind of a little behind on that. But uh, definitely by 8th grade, we start, I'm sorry, by 7th grade, we start switching to uh, Habits of a success, Successful Middle School Musician, which is a great book. I may do a video on that book alone because there's, there's all kinds of gold in that. Um, and then what I've wanted to start doing, I haven't been able to do it yet, is for 8th grade, start switching to Foundations for Superior Performance because that, that is the method book that my high school feeder uses. Um, and then percussionists must have both the snare drum and keyboard books. I don't know why they still do just one or the other, um, but they do a combo book for sound innovations. Um, and again, I have the materials that they need here. Um, grading and assessment, I just go into more detail for the um, what the syllabus had. Um, this is a biggie right here. Absences from performances must be submitted in writing one month in advance. Um, I don't take anything that's not from a parent. If a kid comes up to me and says they're going to be in Jamaica that week, I, I don't care until I hear from a parent. So lessons learned in the past. Um, and then this kind of goes into the MYP stuff. So I'm not, I'm just going to kind of gloss over this really quickly. Um, again, I have my nine week breakdown, 50% uh, performances, 35% uh, achieve, achievement pass-offs is a big fancy word for playing tests. And then 15% practice records or any kind of written work. Um, I have it weighted this way um, because if a, if a student really can't do very well on playing tests and they get really nervous and they tend to not do well on those, as long as they're doing everything else, um, that's fine. Um, and the... Uh, my participation grades go into this 15%. So as long as they are bringing everything they need to bring, they have all their materials and they're playing, everything's fine. Um, pretty much you have to try really hard to fail band. But nonetheless, I have students that fail. Um, students have three school days to, to make up any missed work. I'm usually pretty lenient on that until the very end. I have a cutoff date that's a week before all of my grades are due because if they don't get it in, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bust my butt the last uh, last week to try to get everybody's stuff. In. Um, and then I go into honor bands and events. Uh, we do solo and ensemble. Uh, we do mid-state, which is like our regional band or region band stuff. Um, and we have our concert festivals. Um, the end of the year trip, I put these things right here as a safeguard. Um, we try to do an end of the year trip. This is my fourth year at this school. We haven't been able to do an end of the year trip because the first year was supposed to thunderstorm. That didn't happen. Um, and then the next year was the early COVID year where we shut down early. And then last year, everything was still wonky with COVID. So fourth time's a charm. Um, but I add these in. If you get written up by me, you do not get to go on the end of the year trip because normally I handle all of my stuff in house. So you've got to do something really bad for me to actually write you up. Um, if you are in school or out of school suspended at any point, you don't get to go on the end of the year trip. If you skip a performance, you don't get to go on the end of the year trip. If you can't behave in class, you don't get to go on the end of the year trip. And then something I learned from somebody, I don't remember who it was, but always have this little thing right here. Um, I have the right to keep any student from going on this trip with proper documentation because you can sit here and list this, you know, 30 pages long and somebody's going to do something stupid that you didn't think about. And um, it's not in the handbook, so they kind of get away with it. Um, I go through the how to practice and I do this in class. So this, this process, um, this is something I stole from Stiles Middle School. Um, we go through this with my beginners every day with with all of our stuff. So that's nothing new for them. It's just kind of a reminder at home. Um, things to work at home, because um, we assume everybody knows how to practice at home, but that is not always the case. Um, I have a little acronym here for Avery Trace, you know, just for parents. And then a little bit here 
of what they need to do to help support their kid at home. Because sometimes you get parents that were in band when they were in school, but not always, and they don't know what to do at home. So this kind of helps them with all that. Um, and then I have the, 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 where they have to sign it or uh, whatever. And I do have physical copies of this for them if, if they want to actually sign it, but I've actually turned this into a Google form. And then um, that way I'm not having to print off, you know, 140 of these each year and then half the kids lose them. So I have to print off, you know, 200 something now. Um, so I, this is one of the first assignments in Google Classroom. Where I will post this whole thing digital and then I'll do the Google form for this and I have to fill it out and, you know, whatever. So, um, so that's that. Uh, if you have any questions about any of this, please let me know. Um, I will try to post this, um, an actual copy of this in the, in the description so you can look at it on your own time. Um, if you guys have any, um, any other topics that you want me to cover as we get close to the school year, uh, please let me know and I'll try to get them in really quickly. But uh, hopefully this will get you started on it and every band, band handbook is unique in its own way. So you can completely copy this and just change my name to your name and my school to your school. I don't care that this is me giving permission for you to do that. Um, or you can take what you want out of it, add what you want out of it, get a bunch of handbooks and smash them all together, whatever. So don't feel like you have to reinvent the wheel. Just find somebody else's, steal it and make it your own. So with that, I'm going to end this. Uh, if you have not liked and subscribed yet, please do that. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Thanks, guys.